In the mining country of Montana Territory, it seems that it's one thing to find gold and another to claim it as your own. Frontier Gentlemen. Here with an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. <laughs> I'd been traveling along the Mullen Wagon Road in Montana Territory, and I was looking forward to reaching Helena before dark, when my horse began to go lame. And I realized I faced the prospect of camping out for still another night. I had just rounded a bend in the trail when I saw the small figure plodding along on foot ahead of me. He carried a pack on his back, and as I drew nearer, I saw that he was no more than a boy, 17 or 18. Hi. Hello. Going into Helena? Yes, but I don't think I'll get there tonight. Horse has gone lame. Oh. Yeah, right foreleg, huh? Yes. He slipped off a rut a mile or so further back. Too bad. Thought I might get a ride with you. There ain't been many wagons along today. No. How far have you walked? Mostly from Fort Benton. Got a couple of rides day four yesterday. <coughs> See? Um, you, you don't happen to have any food on you? I ain't got much, but I could pay a dollar or two, I guess. Oh, I've enough for the two of us. You better save your money. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, Keep your Mr. eyes open for a decent bit of ground, and we'll make a camp. About half a mile beyond, we found a somewhat sheltered spot a little way off the trail. The youngster, his name was Bill Richmond, gathered wood, and I prepared the food. It was almost dark by the time we had finished. Well, that was as fine a meal as I've ever eaten, Mr. Kendall. And I'm glad you enjoyed it, Bill. Did you smoke? Mm, no, sir. I haven't found a taste for it yet. <laughs> well, you've got time. Take my advice. When you do, use a pipe. Yes, sir. Where'd you come from? Kentucky. Mm, a long way. Yeah, I run away from home. It wasn't much of a place. I figured I was old enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you came out here for gold? That's right. Hey, you make any strikes, Mr. Kendall? No, no. I'm not a prospector. How did you get to Fort Benton, Bill? Mm, I worked my way up one of them river boats. I sure learned plenty about gold mining from some of them fellas. You know what this says? There's places in this country where you can pick the gold right off the ground. Mm, I imagine the trick is to find those places. Oh, I will. <laughs> of course, I don't mind digging some if I have to. I wish you luck. Hello. Sounds though like we have visitors. How are you? Me and my pals saw the light of your fire off of the trail. You mind company? No, not at all. Uh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, my name is Jack Hinton. Oh, this here, this is Rod Goodall. Howdy. And him with a long face there, that's Dauncey Abbott. How are you? J.B. Kendall. The nipper is Bill Richmond. Oh, howdy. Uh, I'd offer you some food, but I'm afraid we used the last Oh, one. that's all right. We got our own grub. But how's the firewood? Enough, I think. <laughs> uh, Dauncey, your turn for the grub. Get going. Mm, nothing I hate worse than... <laughs> He hates cooking like thunder, but he sure knows how to make a son of a gun stew. Yeah. Oh, now that fire sure does feel good. You and the kid have any luck? Find any traces around here? And as a matter of fact, Mr. Goodall, I haven't been looking. I'm on my way to Helena. No, Bill is the prospector. Oh, that's so? Boy, we just camping down for the night. I aim to try my luck west of Helena. So, huh? 
Well, now, boy, how come you wait until you get there? Well, I heard tell of big strikes. That's how come, mister. Oh, <laughs> now, you listen to me, boy. There ain't no sense going everybody else goes. But for all you know, you're sitting on a bonanza right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're joshing me. <laughs> no, no, I ain't. Here, Rod. Rod, ain't that the truth? It could be. Why, sure it could. Now, listen, I heard stranger happen. Oh, they're pulling your leg, Bill. No, sir, no such of a thing, <laughs> mister. Now, oh, now, listen here. Me and the boys, we was working Deer Lodge country a year. Dauncey, you remember? I remember. Why, sure. Now, a couple of fellers right in the next camp to us. They got into a shoot-up. Next thing you know, one of them bites the dust. Other fella, he starts out to bury the poor son of a gun. He digs a grave right there in the camp, and what do you think? Yeah? Pay dirt. Lousy with gold. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Hinton, you'd take first prize with that one. In a minute, you'd have me believe in you. Oh, but that's <laughs> the truth, though. Oh, we've seen stranger things than that. And that's a fact. It was a pleasant way to pass the night. The three prospectors, hard-bitten, rough men, spinning one tail after another... They'd never find a better audience than Bill Richmond, and they knew it. I could see him absorbing every word. And it wasn't until the fire was getting low that we finally turned in. At first, I thought I heard the shouting in my dreams. And then I knew that I was awake, and it was beginning to grow light in the east. Rich, I made it. What? What are you talking about, Bill? Just like they said here, I found it. Found what? The gold. The gold. Gold. Boy, what's it? Gold. What? Look, Mister Hinton. Mister Hinton, sir. Look here, gold. Gold. All night I thought about what you told me. You know, all them stories. I didn't even sleep for it. And this morning, this morning here, I got up and I walked up the gulch, and I found here, this. Now, let me see that. Iron pyrite, so bet you. May I see? Ain't it gold, Mr. Kendall? It is. The fellas on the boat, they told me what to look for. Iron pyrite, sir. Dauncey, fetch me the hammer. Oh, I, got, I got more in my pockets. Look at this Boy, one. Boy, will you shut your mouth a minute? Where'd you find it? Surface? No, no, kind of kind of sticking out of a rock in a, in a gully. I can show you. Well, I'm sure obliged to you, Mr. Hinton. Here's the hammer. If you want my opinion, you're wasting your time. That's gold. Sure it is, Mr. Kendall. Don't break. Ooh. It's soft. Ain't no alloy in it, neither. No silver or copper. Look at the color. Pure gold. Show us where you found it, boy. We followed Bill into a gulch which began no more than a hundred yards from the campfire. He turned into a shallow gully and stopped. I could see where he had cut into the rocky bank with his pocket knife. And I could see something else, too. In the faces of the men who stood over him. The guarded tones of voice. Bill, Bill, I would say that you've hit it. That's a fact. Ain't no question in my mind. No telling how far that vein goes. Say, don't, don't think I'll forget you, fellas, because I won't. I, I'm going to make a fine present to all of you. Well, that's mighty thoughtful, boy, mighty thoughtful. I imagine one stakes out a claim now, isn't that so, Mr. Hinton? Hmm. Then register it in Helena? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah, that sure is, Kendall. That's the thing to do. Uh, Bill? Bill, I don't guess you'd mind if me, me and the boys take a look on up the gully ways, would you? There should be plenty for all of us. Oh, no, sir, you go right ahead. I ain't no hog now. I got all I need right here. Good, good. Then we'll help you then make out the claim, all proper and legal. Well, that's fine. All right, let's go, boys. Oh, uh, Kendall, you coming? Uh, in just a moment. Miss Kendall, listen. I owe you plenty picking me up. Sharing your food with me and no? all? I'm cutting you in for a share of this. Oh, no, no, no. It's yours. If there's more here, I'll stake my own claim. No, no, you don't have to. Now, this here must be worth hundreds and thousands. Listen to me, Bill. The most important thing is for you to register that claim. Get title to it. Do you understand? Oh, sure, sure. All right. Have you got a gun? Uh, no, I ain't got no gun. Well, you know how to use one. Well, I guess so, but... I'd take it, just in case of accidents. I'm going with the others now. If any more strangers come, don't tell them what you found. All right, Mr. Kendall. You better go back to camp now. Wait for me there. 
Sure, if you say so. <laughs> I stayed with the three prospectors almost the whole day. We found traces all right, low-grade ore, but nothing really worth working. It was late afternoon when we retraced our steps to the camp. On the way, we passed through the gully and the site of Bill's claim. The sun had already fallen behind the mountains to the west, and there was a chill in the air. Can't just figure it. Just the one vein. Possibly it's a question of digging. Seems to be a number of gullies running off. We looked around these parts a couple of years back. Remember, Rod? That's right. I'd swear what the kid found's a freak. Might not go more than a foot or two and then peter out. No, don't look that way to me. I'd say she'd show better than... Oh, $2,000 a ton. Hmm. Lucky boy. Yeah, ain't he, though. Say, Candle. You and the boy, you partners or something? Oh, no. Oh. I met him yesterday for the first time. Oh? A man can search a lifetime, not find anything like that. Yeah. Kind of crazy, ain't it? We tell him stories, and he takes us up on it and finds this. Think that'd be worth a share in the claim, wouldn't you? He sure shooting wouldn't have come looking if we hadn't given him the idea. Sure. What do you think, Kendall? I think, gentlemen, that this is Bill Richmond's claim, and we'd better get it staked out for him before dark. The way you see it, huh? Exactly that way. Yeah. Well, might as well get on back to camp. Well, don't you think it'd be a good idea to help the boy to stake out his claim before nightfall? Oh, I don't know, Kendall. I'm kind of tired right now. How about you fellas? Yeah. I sure had enough for one day. Oh, that man's been there a long time. I guess she won't be moving tonight. Kendall, uh, you know how to stake out a claim. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Oh. Well, I guess it can wait. Do something about it in the morning, huh? Because right now I sure could use some grub. <laughs> In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. A suspense story starring Agnes Moorhead and the latest action-packed adventure with insurance investigator Johnny Dollar are two of the exciting dramas waiting for you on CBS Radio today. If you like your listening on the thrilling side, don't miss Agnes Moorhead on Suspense. And don't miss Johnny Dollar's tense tangle with a spy ring on most of these same stations today. And now we return you to Anthony Ellis' production of Frontier Gentlemen. In the camp now, there was a very different atmosphere. Sullen, I think is the best word for it. A subtle hostility had settled like a gray mist. I saw the men huddled together as Bill and I prepared the campfire. And I had a pretty good idea of what they were talking about. Oh, she's going fine now, Mr. Now, Kendall. Uh, listen to me, Bill. I think we may be in for a bit of trouble. Now, no matter what happens, keep your head. How come? No time to explain now, you'll see. Just don't lose your temper. <clears throat> Bill. Yeah, Mr. Hinton? Bill, me and the boy's been talking. Now, we figure while it's still light, you ought to get that claim staked out all regular. Oh, yeah, that's fine with me. Now, of course, doing you a service like that, seeing how you nor Kendall know about such things, we reckon it ought to be worth something to you. Oh, that's all right. I don't want something for nothing. There, see? See what I tell you, boy? He's a good kid. You was right. Uh, what was... do you think such services are worth, Mr. Hinton? Even shares all around. Cut you in two, of course, Mr. Kendall. Even shares? Just a moment, Bill. Pretty expensive, isn't it? I imagine a lawyer wouldn't charge that much. Ain't no lawyers around here, is there, Jack? <laughs> no, sir. Now, Bill, it's kind of like protecting your rights, you see? 
Because if anything happened and you didn't get to get your claim registered, why, the next feller comes along, the whole thing belonged to him, you see? Rather awkward situation, isn't it? It sure is. We're taking the gamble as much as you, kid. Why, heck, that, that vein might not be worth nothing to foot down. I was under the impression you thought it would work out to about... $2,000 a now, ton. Look, mister, we're doing well, business with the boy, not with you. I'm representing his interests. That right, Bill? Yes, sir. Since when? About the same time as you decided to help him register his claim, Mr. Goodall. Well, what's your deal with the kid? Uh, we have a gentleman's agreement. Hmm. Pretty smart. And you come in for half. Presuming that I did. That still leaves him half, which is a lot better than a fifth share. As it happens, I have no intentions of doing so. You believe this dude, kid... Yeah, I believe him. Well, we ain't getting nowhere. Don't see much well get going on the garage. I did it last night. Well, do it again. It ain't my turn. Uh, Come over here. You too, Rob. Have you got the gun on you, Bill? Yeah, stuck in my belt here. And keep your jacket buttoned. Don't let them see it. You figure they're going to take my gold away from me, Mr. Kimball? I think they'll make a good try. Well, I ain't going to let them. Keep your voice down. I'm sorry, sir. That sure gets me mad, though. I heard about claim jumpers, but I never expected to run into them this quick. <laughs> the price of fame and fortune. Well, they're going to have to kill me to get mine. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Ah, the conference is over. All right, me and the boys got an offer to make. Happy to listen to any offer. You and the kid take 50%, we take 50%. Hmm. I'll make you a counteroffer. You take nothing, I take nothing, Bill takes all. Yeah, you see, I told you. Now look, mister, you ain't in no position to make an offer. Till that claim gets registered, it don't belong to no one. Now if me and the boys decide to stake it out for ourselves, what are you going to do about it? I imagine there'd be some shooting, don't you? You only got one gun, we got three. Would you like to draw first? No, there ain't no use that kind of talk. Now, nobody's talking about a shoot-up. We just want what's rightfully ours. We told the kid where to look. That makes us equal partners. I don't think so. Oh, no, sir. If the kid rides in to get someone out to stake that claim for him, you know we got a right to take over while he's gone. If I let you. It ain't your strike. He'll give me power of attorney and writing. You bet I will. What, what's he talking about? Are you a lawyer? No. Of course, maybe you'll ride to Helena. Leave him here. <laughs> Very doubtful. All right, now see how it is then? We got all the grub. You got none. We can just sit it out and wait. By and by, you'll get so hungry, you'll sell us the whole thing for some eats. Did you ever stop to consider that the wagon trail is not very far away? All Bill has to do is to wait for someone to come along. I wouldn't be surprised if there were one or two honest men who would give him a hand staking his claim... I'd be happy to stay here while he's gone. All right, all right, all right, Kendall, all right. All right, you win. <laughs> I guess we know when we're licked. Eh? Boys, we'll pull out. How come? Cut your mouth, Doncy. Say, we'll pull out. Kendall is right. Kid found it. It's his claim. And just to show you, Mr. Kendall, that there's no hard feelings, we'll leave you some of our grub. How's that? Extremely kind. Well, I'll pay for it, Hinton. What do you figure it's oh, worth? No, no, kid. It's a present to you. It, it make up for what we tried to do to you. <laughs> sort of a conscience salve, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, come on, boys. Let's get moving. I didn't have the heart to laugh at Hinton's clumsy attempt to put us off guard. They packed their belongings and within ten minutes were riding off down toward the Mullen Road. At the same time... I had no illusions about our somewhat uncomfortable position. You figure they'll come back? I think there's no doubt of it. I'm sure glad I got this here gun in. I hope you don't have to use it. You all want me to get started on the grub? Yes, you might as well. <sighs> sure is something. What happens to fellas when they get a sight of gold, ain't it? History has a way of repeating itself, Bill. I went through something like this only a week ago in Fort Benton. You know what I'm gonna do if that stock's really worth something? I'm gonna sell out. 
You know, I'm going back to Kentucky. I'm going to fix things up just fine for my mom and pa. And the kids. Brothers and sisters? Oh, yeah, a whole slew of them. Eight. That's one of the reasons I took off. Mm. Well, the immediate problem seems to be our friends. If I send you to Helena now, they might be waiting for you. On the other hand, if I go, they could come back here. I ain't feared either way. No doubt. But your claim won't be worth much to you if you're not alive to enjoy it. Hmm. Mr. Kendall? Hmm? What are you doing in Montana? Oh, nothing much, really, Bill. I think the word is drifting. I drift about. Do a little writing for a newspaper in London. London, England? Mm Mm-hmm. So, you know something? I never did learn reading and writing. That's something else I'm going to do when I get back. Mm, It's a good idea. But we'd better make preparations to make sure you do go back. As far as I could determine, their most likely line of approach would be up a shallow draw. We packed everything we could find under our blankets to make it appear we were asleep in the clearing. An hour passed. The moon rose. Mr. Kendall. Yes. Yes, I heard it. Take out your gun, but don't shoot unless I tell you to. All right, sir. And keep down behind the brush. Now, boys, get him! That should ought to have done it, boys. No. What? Wait a minute. It ain't them under the blankets. It ain't. Just a lot. Drop your guns, gentlemen. Stand just where you are. We we, we, we was just coming back to see you was all right. Your thoughtfulness shatters me. I told you it wouldn't work. Pick up their guns, Bill. Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, we'll wait until it's light enough. Then you are going to stake out a claim. It'll be in the name of William Richmond. Are there are there any objections? Good. All right, make yourselves comfortable. And then while we're waiting, perhaps you'd like to tell us some more stories. <laughs> The next morning, bright and early, Bill's claim was properly marked off, and to doubly ensure that there would be no more dirty work, our dishonest friends were led, well trust, into the sheriff's office at Helena. Bill's strike didn't make him a great fortune, but it was enough to take him home a richer man than he came out. I allowed him, under the circumstances, to reward me, and he did, very fairly. One thousand dollars. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Eddie Firestone, Larry Dobkin, Jack Moyles, and Vic Perrin. Music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Right after the Ford Roadshow, which follows immediately on most of these same stations, stay tuned for the New York Philharmonic Concert performance of Electra. And join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.